If you're not docking your Steam Deck to your TV, you're missing out on a game-changing experience. And this is something that the deck is crying out for, but wait a minute. It doesn't even have an HDMI port, so how are you supposed to connect it to your TV? And how do you set up a controller? Well, we'll cover all of that in this video. But before I get into it, I want to take a second and thank this video's sponsor, Micro Center. Micro Center is one of the largest consumer electronics retailers in the US. With over 30,000 products in stock, there's something for everyone. Students, IT managers, and gamers alike trust Micro Center for their computers and electronic needs. And Micro Center has got big news. With 25 stores nationwide, they're opening a new one in Indianapolis and two more by 2025. So in order to celebrate this, Micro Center is offering some great deals. If you visit the Indianapolis store or the website to sign up, Micro Center is offering a free 128 gigabyte flash drive. And if that's not enough, Micro Center is offering an awesome coupon for my audience, and with it, new customers can get $15 off their next purchase. If I were you, I'd use that $15 off towards a new 1TB 2230 SSD. You can use one of these to upgrade your storage in your Steam Deck or other device. Also, it's Apple Month all month long at Micro Center, with some great deals that you won't see anywhere else. For the rest of the month of April, you can check out Micro Center's prices on Apple laptops and different customizations that you can't get in other stores. So head on over to Micro Center and use my link to get your $15 off. Oh yeah, and pick up one of those 128 gigabyte flash drives for me too. Thank you to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. And now back to it. Now there's one glaringly obvious issue with connecting your Steam Deck to your TV, the lack of an HDMI port or display port for that matter. And that's because, much like the Nintendo Switch, this handheld supports video out over a single USB Type-C port. However, unlike the Switch, the deck does not come bundled with a docking station. Most USB-C docks, which are also called hubs with an HDMI port, will work with your Steam Deck, but not all of them are created equal. If you're going to pick up a hub for yourself, there are several things to watch out for. First of all, don't bother with things like this, these, these cheap USB to HDMI cables, unless you have a very specific purpose for using them. While many of them will definitely work, generally speaking, you'll want a hub that supports USB power delivery as well as HDMI out. And for it to adequately power the deck, it should be power delivery up to at least 60 watts. It's safe to use more, and having a higher power delivery rating will allow more devices to be connected to the hub at once. You'll also want to have a, a hub that has all the connectivity that you need. If you want to plug your deck into your local network rather than relying on Wi-Fi, get a hub with an Ethernet jack. If you want to expand your storage using a USB drive or connect a mouse and keyboard, make sure that your hub has enough USB ports for everything that you need. To simplify things in this video, I'll be using the official Steam Deck docking station from Valve. This is because it strikes a great balance of connectivity, features, and form factor. Plus, it's built specifically for the Steam Deck. However, there are other compatible USB-C hubs listed in the pinned comment below. Each one of them has a different array of ports and expansion, and each one I've personally tested. Picking the right hub goes hand in hand with what TV or monitor you'll be connecting it to. For example, in my living room, I have a 4K Ankia receiver connected to my LG TV. Connecting my Steam Deck using the official dock is easy using the HDMI port. Now, my desktop monitors support refresh rates of up to 120 Hz. The Steam Deck supports this refresh rate, but only at 1440p or under. Also, while my TV only has HDMI ports, my monitor has display ports. That's not a problem for the official docking station, but most hubs lack display port. Which makes me feel the need to reiterate one more time, make sure you choose the correct hub for your use case. And finally, I have this CRT television. This is a Sony Trinitron, and it has an HDMI port on it. Yes, it actually does. It's also a 16 by nine display. It is truly awesome. Playing Steam Deck on here feels like somehow nostalgic and it's really great. Uh, most of the time when I'm live streaming Friday nights at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, we're playing on this CRT and it is an absolute blast. It looks amazing and it's great to play on. Plus, when we're playing on this TV, we're using 720p output, which is just about the same size as the Steam Deck's native display. I want to give a special shout out to Glenn Steen, one of my top tier Singularity members over on Patreon. It's because of people like Glenn and the 73 other members that I have supporting this show that I'm able to keep the lights on here. So thank you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to support the show, you can use the links below to become a patron, a YouTube member, or a ViewSync Premium subscriber. It's all greatly appreciated. 
Next, let's talk about resolution. When connecting your deck to an external display, it will automatically choose the native resolution of the display for output. This is okay in many instances, but you also have control over it in the settings. Hit the Steam button and then select Settings. Navigate to the Display section and you should see the Output Resolution options. Keep in mind that the Steam Deck's native resolution is 1280 by 800 and it might be a struggle for the hardware to play AAA games at resolutions much higher than that. But there are solutions to this. For example, we can set an output resolution of 1080p here, even though my TV is 4K. But there are a few issues with this. First, this is a global setting that will affect all games. And second, this could introduce lag into the experience if your TV's upscaler is low quality. So instead, I'd recommend leaving the output resolution to the native resolution of the external display and configure the output resolution of each game individually. This might sound tedious, but you might be surprised how few games actually need to be tweaked. For example, if you want to play one of my favorite games, Spelunky, on the deck, you can actually do this in 4K without an issue. But when it comes to other games, games that require a bit more horsepower from the hardware, uh, you're going to run into some issues. You have a few options to resolve this, and which one you decide is going to depend on the game you're playing and your TV. For example, if you're going to play God of War, I would recommend launching the game and choosing a rendering resolution that's lower, much lower than the native display resolution, and then enabling AMD's FidelityFX Super Resolution to upscale the image. Alternatively, the Steam Deck allows games to be rendered at a lower resolution, and then it, the deck itself scales that image up to our display's resolution. This is for games that don't natively support FidelityFX. To understand the next few options, though, we need to talk about how the Steam Deck actually handles resolutions. When you plug a monitor into your PC, for example, the monitor will tell the operating system its supported resolutions and refresh rates, as well as its native resolution. When you boot a game, the game will ask the OS for the supported resolutions of the current monitor, and then based on the system resources, it will try to select the best settings to run the game on your PC. With SteamOS and Game Mode, there's actually a software abstraction layer that you can think of as a virtual screen that games are rendered to. SteamOS and its components render at the native resolution of the display, or whatever resolution you choose in the settings menu. Then the virtual display usually limits the game's output resolutions to 720p, and then the output of that virtual display is scaled to your TV's native resolution using the performance menu's scaling settings. This allows games on deck to be rendered at a much lower resolution and then scaled out to the display's resolution. This is an especially great resolution for games that don't have FSR implemented. But like I said, our virtual display is limited to 720p in game mode. But you can change this. Go to the game's library page, select the gear icon on the right, and then select properties. On the general tab, select game resolution. Changing this setting will allow the game to see resolutions well above 720p, or even limit it to less than that. And while you might think that you would want to run all of your games at 4K on the deck, that's not the case. First of all, the deck can't support a lot of games running at 4K, but even if performance is fine in a game at 4K, many games will look worse in native 4K than at even 1080p with FSR applied to them. And this is because the game's assets were mastered in 1080p, and then the game itself has to scale up these assets uh, by two or even four times the size. Whereas if you run the game at, say, 1080p, and then use FSR in the performance menu to scale the game's output up, it looks a lot better. Finally, once you have your deck connected to your TV and you've got your resolutions set up, you'll probably want to connect a controller. This is a straightforward process. If your controller has a USB dongle or it's wired, you should be able to plug them in using an available USB port. If you have a Bluetooth controller, hit the Steam button on the deck, select Settings, and then navigate to the Bluetooth section. Make sure Bluetooth is turned on, and then scroll down to the Available to Pair section. Now, put your controller in pairing mode. How you do this will vary based on your controller. If you're using a DualSense or a DualShock 4 gamepad, hold the share and home buttons at the same time until they start blinking. The Switch Pro controller requires holding the pair button until the lights start dancing like this. The Steam controller can be paired via Bluetooth by holding the home and Y buttons until you hear it make a noise. Once your gamepad is in pairing mode, you should see it listed in the available to pair section. Dang, now you're set up and you're ready to play.
I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on any of this. Did I miss any major steps? Leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I think that's gonna do it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna give a special shout out to all the fine folks that you see over here. It's because of folks like this that I'm able to keep all these lights on. And Lord knows we have a lot of lights. <laughs> I think that's gonna do it for now though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next one.